Series 71 diesel engines have a manually operated throttle with which the operator may vary the speed of the diesel engine. In order to safeguard the engine against dangerous overspeeding or possible stalling, the Series 71 engines have a mechanical governor of the limiting speed type. This governor automatically takes over speed control in the low and high speed ranges. While all engine speeds in the intermediate speed range are controlled by the engine throttle. The governor is mounted at the front of the blower and driven from the upper rotor shaft. This governor is divided into three main assemblies. The governor flyweights and housing, operating shaft and housing assembly, and the cover. In the weight housing, two sets of flyweights are carried on a horizontal shaft. The motion produced by the travel of these weights is transmitted through a movable riser to a fork or yoke on the lower end of the vertical operating shaft. Mounted to the upper end of this shaft is a bell crank or operating lever. One end of this bell crank bears against a high and low speed spring assembly. The other end carries a pivot pin for a differential lever. One end of this lever is connected through a link to the fuel injector control. The other end of the differential lever is slotted to receive a pin on the control lever, which in turn is linked to the engine throttle. Before we study the action of the governor mechanism, let us consider the operation of the manual fuel control. In this diagram, we see the throttle lever. The control lever and pin engaging the differential lever the injector control link, the injector control tube, and one of the injector racks. When the throttle is moved to the full fuel position, the injector racks are set for the maximum fuel injection. If the throttle is moved to the idling position, the injectors will supply just enough fuel to keep the engine turning over at idling speed. Observe the action of the differential lever as we go to full fuel position and back to idling position. With the throttle at a fixed position, it is also possible to change the amount of fuel injected by moving the pivot of the differential lever. Therefore, the governor is connected to the fuel control mechanism at this point. The action of the governor is transmitted to the fuel control by a bell crank lever which carries the pivot of the differential lever. If the engine speed drops below idling speed, the bell crank of the governor moves the differential lever to an increased fuel position. The automatic action of the governor in this way controls the idling speed of the engine. If the engine tends to overspeed, the governor bell crank moves the differential lever to a decreased fuel position, thereby automatically limiting the maximum speed of the engine. The motion of the bell crank is caused by the speed sensitive mechanism of the governor shown here in diagram. The flyweights are mounted together on the flyweight carrier and shaft which is splined to fit into the upper blower rotor shaft. A lever extension of the high speed weights 
bears against a flange on the movable riser. The low speed weights make contact against the high speed weight through a shoulder. As the flyweights move outward, both the low and high speed weights move together until the stops on the low speed weight make contact with the weight carrier. This is the outermost limit of the travel of the low speed weight. The high speed weights can travel still further until their stops make contact with the weight carrier. Motion of the flyweights is transmitted through the movable riser and the yoke at the lower end of the vertical shaft to the bell crank at the upper end. One lever of the bell crank bears against a spring assembly consisting of the low speed and the high speed spring. The other lever of the bell crank carries the pivot for the differential lever of the fuel control. At low engine speed, or idling speed, the centrifugal force of both the low and high speed weights is great enough to move the bell crank against the pressure of the low speed spring. The greater the engine speed, the further the weights move out, and the more the spring is depressed. As the engine speed enters the intermediate speed range, the low speed weights have reached the limit of their travel. The low speed spring is fully depressed and the bell crank bears directly against the high speed spring plunger. In the high speed range, the centrifugal force of the high speed weight becomes great enough to move the bell crank against the pressure of the high-speed spring. With the fuel control connected to this speed-sensitive mechanism, let us study the action of the governor in the low and the high-speed range. When the engine operates in the low-speed range, both the low-speed and the high-speed weights are moved outward, partially compressing the low-speed spring. If the engine speed drops, the centrifugal force of the flyweights is reduced, allowing the spring to expand, thus moving the bell crank and differential lever. The resulting increase in fuel injection prevents the engine speed from dropping below idling speed. When the engine operates in the intermediate speed range, the low speed weights continue to rotate in their most outward position, while the low speed spring is fully depressed. The high speed weights rotate in a fixed position, since their centrifugal force in this speed range is not sufficient to overcome the pressure of the high speed spring. It is in this intermediate speed range that the fuel injection is regulated by manual operation of the throttle. When the speed of the engine approaches maximum speed, the centrifugal force of the revolving high speed weights becomes great enough to move them outward against the pressure of the high speed spring. The bell crank moves the differential lever to a decreased fuel position, thereby preventing any increase above maximum governed speed. Thus it is seen that governor action takes place when the balance between the centrifugal force of the flyweight and the spring pressure is disturbed. To set the engine's maximum and idling speed, several adjustments on the governor are possible. Adjustments for lower or higher idling speed are made by a screw which sets the compression of the low speed spring.
a buffer spring is provided to cushion the differential levers off travel and to prevent engine roll at idling speed. This spring may be adjusted by a set screw to ensure contact with the differential lever in idling speed position. The low speed range of the governor is determined by the setting of the low speed spring gap. This is accomplished by turning the adjustment screw in the bell crank lever. The tension of the high speed spring determines the maximum speed of the engine. The high speed spring is adjusted at the factory by the use of shims. Adjustment is made for the particular maximum engine speed for which the unit is used and should not be altered. With the proper adjustment, the limiting speed mechanical governor regulates the fuel supply in low and high speed and thus contributes greatly to the efficient performance and smooth operation of the engine.